Uh, new and improved. That was just telling me that we've started recording, which is one of the things that I was going to tell everybody. Uh, so welcome to this uh, webinar. We've got some new and improved editions of Power Maths that we're going to tell you about today. Um, but we're not going to assume any familiarity with Power Maths. We're going to start right from the beginning today. I'm Simon Holden White, a senior product manager at Pearson. And um, mostly I'm going to help with any questions that come up as far as I can. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit at the end, but mostly you're going to hear from Tony Staneff, who's our series editor for Power Maths. And Tony's also one of the authors. Tony's been working really hard with uh, Josh Leary, who's the other uh, main author, um, to, to make some tweaks and updates to Power Maths. But Tony's been our series editor for Power Maths and involved uh, with Power Maths right from the beginning. Um, so I'll just hand over to Tony, but before I do that, I will um, just let you know, we're going to record the session. We are recording the session. Uh, once we have the video, we'll be able to send it round. So, so long as you're not opted out of receiving a follow-up message from us or anything like that, you'll receive, um, you'll receive a message when, when the recording's done, in case you want to share it with anyone who couldn't make it today or look back and remember anything. Um, Oh, yes. And the other thing is just about the Q&A box, because the best way to ask questions is using the Q&A box, which you which then directs the questions to us on the on the panel. Um, there is a chat feature as well, which sometimes people use, but that's something uh, I think which, which means you can sort of chat with everybody else who's on the um, on the webinar. But if you want to ask a specific question and get an answer, the best one to open is the Q&A box and put your question in there if that's okay. So, uh, Tony, you're sharing your slides, aren't you? So, um, shall I hand over to you? Thanks, Simon. Thank you. Uh, nice to meet everybody as well. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to talk. Uh, I'm assuming that most people on the call have uh, maybe uh, potentially seen Power Maths or not seen Power Maths, uh, probably unlikely to be using it. So, the purpose today is just to give you a brief overview of what Power Maths is, how it fits alongside the White Rose Math schemes, and uh, just talk about some of the underpinning principles around Power Maths. So, uh, this is the rough agenda. So, there's eight points. So, we'll look at the master principles, the reason why you might want to use a textbook scheme, the structure that Power Maths is, the, the new edition, the new White Rose Maths edition, and the changes uh, potentially to the previous ones, how you can use Power Maths and White Rose together. And then uh, Simon will come in and just talk about other things that is of, of, are available through uh, your subscription uh, if you take one up and then also uh, when everything will be available. So that's the purpose today. Should hopefully take around about half an hour, 40 minutes. And uh, as Simon said, if you've got any questions, please raise them in the Q&A as we go through that and we can pick up any uh, ones at the end that potentially haven't been answered. So let's move on. So. I am quite sure that majority of schools, uh, majority of teacher schools on this call today are probably uh, doing some work with math subs. And we know that uh, one of the things that the NCTM set out very early, and it's still a document that exists, is around really what they feel are the underpinning mastery principles. This idea of taking a mastery approach that everybody can, that we can all succeed in maths, belief, et cetera. This idea of a mastery curriculum, that coherence, that small steps, okay, that building build, building on strong foundations. This idea of teaching for mastery, those representations, the structures, the models, and essentially then achieving mastery, achieving success through uh, uh, through assessment and through other means really. So those are the four guiding principles uh, underpinning mastery principles that also underpin the work of power maths uh, and which we'll come on to in a bit more detail. So I, I'm quite sure many of you have seen this as well. Okay, this, th this is, uh, again, from the NCTM and then work at a math subs. OK, we're doing some great work. And the, these are the teaching for mastery principles, that idea of mathematical thinking, uh, that fluency, that variation and that representation structure and then coherence going through uh, the idea of small steps. Uh, and all these things have guided uh, have guided what we've done at White Rose, but have also guided very much what uh, uh, what we've done with Empower Maths. So. I know when I speak to a lot of schools, uh, because we're not necessarily a textbook nation, they've said, "What? why a textbook? What, what, why a textbook? Why not just worksheets or, or PowerPoint, et cetera? So why might a textbook be something that's really useful? 
So firstly, a textbook provides a clear learning progression that children can see. So if they, they've got a textbook in front of them, they can see the journey right there as it is, and they can see where they are in that journey to conflict back to parts. And they can also occasionally look ahead if they want to see where they're going. So, so, so we know that that's what a textbook does. A digital, a, a digital sheets or digital things from all don't necessarily show that full journey, but it gives that clear learning uh, progression. Secondly, uh, in a textbook, the, 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 it's ordered sequentially, okay? And the idea is that log it, it's built logically to build that understanding. And then finally, as I mentioned a second ago, those children can go back to themselves to help them. Oh, how did I do that last lesson? How did we do this? So that those are some of the advantages that are given for textbooks. Uh, they're particularly helpful for novice teachers, so early career teachers or something like that. If, if, you, if you look at some of the highest performing jurisdictions where textbooks are very much a staple, you find that those early teachers use the textbook more of a, a, a real resource that guides their practice. And over time, they maybe dip into it less, but they still use it extensively. Models and representations, if you use a textbook scheme right from year one through to year six, you know that models and representations that children will see will be consistent. And I know that when I visit at some schools, when they're not using, say, a textbook or a particular scheme, you notice that what they do is they might be using a work, particular worksheets in year one, particular worksheets, and those models and images look very different. And really, for, for cognitive purposes, it's really helpful that a text, but it's really helpful if you've got something that's consistent all the way through uh, school. And, and certainly that's what a, a textbook scheme like Power Maths could provide. And then finally, the textbooks are underpinned by well-grounded theory, okay, and will and provide great professional development for teachers. So those are the reasons why textbooks are really useful. And particularly if you've got a team in your school who may be new to teaching or, or, or looking to develop that teaching for mastery, a textbook scheme might be really useful for you. So why Power Maths? Well, first, the Power Maths does all the above, right? So everything that I've just spoken about, Power Maths does that. Secondly, it follows the White Rose Math Scheme, okay? And, and it's often, so I, I, I'm here at White Rose, some of my colleagues, we, lots of people at White Rose have contributed to the textbook. Right. It's designed for schools in their current context as well. It's full of purposeful practice and it just makes sure that it builds on really where children are at the moment. I know SATS results, interestingly, being out today and I've, I've seen looking at the performance and I know maths taking a dip nationally and the new additions have very much been built and designed with things like that in mind, our current context and how we can build from it. So. Uh, you may be you may be aware that uh, we've updated alongside White Rose we've uh, we've updated the Power Maths uh, overviews so they now completely match the White Rose uh, overviews uh, so the new ones so that they're so in this new edition they're completely updated uh, and the rationale for the change that both ourselves and White Rose uh, uh, have done is, is around really the, the pandemic response to pandemic. OK, so really thinking about some of those key topics, making sure that children have got a stronger foundation on those. And some topics we've decided to just maybe leave and, and, and focus on in different year and guided again by the DFE and NCTM guidance, things like ready to progress. And also a massive thing has been feedback from Power Math schools. Changes to Power Maths and changes to the White Rose schemes have been uh, have, have, have come about because of feedback that schools who are using it have given. So therefore, that has been uh, uh, some of the that that's really the rationale for change. Next of all is there's also better alignment for mixed age. We know one of the biggest bits of feedback we had at White Rose was around mixed age teachers and very similar with Power Maths. So we've tried to make it easier for those teachers who the most common year group uh, combinations are one, two, three, four, five, six, where you've got, it should be much easier to uh, teach. So you're teaching similar content at the same time. And that just shows you an example of an autumn term progression really, and hopefully you can see really how uh, th those, those matches up, which is a lot far more closer aligned than it has ever been before. So this is an old uh, uh, unit from uh, Power Math. So this used to be the year three fractions one, 
I'll give you a few seconds to have a quick look at that. And year three fractions is where the ready to progress criteria really encourages a, a, a going into depth because accepting that in year one and year two, although children do meet fractions, they might not have met it in the detail that they 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 previously uh, that they really need to, and they might not have a strong foundation. So what we do, what we've chosen to do in Power Maths and White Rose is we go into really go back to the fundamental basics of it. So really go back to this idea of understanding the denominator, compare and order unit fractions by comparing the denominators and, and so on and so forth and all these ideas. So we've really taken those concepts and broken those concepts down in, even further. Again, looking at what uh, 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 looking at what NCTM is saying, the maths are saying, RTP is saying, etc. Uh, we both we've, we've tried to really take all that information into account so so hopefully you'll see a much clearer progression slower steps and we've removed some content that maybe would have been in the non-stat guidance previously so if you're thinking about oh does that mean there's going to be a lot more content no it just means that we've been a bit more savvy around really what we teach when we teach and how long we spend on it and really focusing on those key topics that will build that long-term understanding so those are the changes I now want to just talk very brief, well, not briefly, but to talk a bit of detail now about the structure. So this is, pro if you're not a power mass user at the moment, this structure is really uh, what you will be used to. So what power mass, uh, what you'll get to know. So what power mass does, it gives you a structure for maths lessons, okay? So it starts with uh, a power up, which is really essentially a warm up activity, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, uh, there is an alternative power up this year, which I'll share with you. Uh, then we go into what's called the discover and share section, which is really that classroom working together, children often working together to solve a problem. And then the class come together and share that a bit like where you ask the class a question and you get the ideas from the class. And, and that's what the discover and share is. We then get the think together section, which is the uh, I do, we do, you do approach, where, where, where is a class? So we build up from that example, that shared goodness that we'd received, okay? And we, and we go through some works examples together, which hopefully builds their confidence and eventually gets to the practice, this independent practice. And then, and then there's an opportunity right at the very end to reflect. So that is the, excuse me, that is a lesson structure for power maths. And, and we'll just talk about each of the elements there and same day intervention, which I'm not going to touch on too much today, runs throughout that uh, uh, concept that some, that there's some ideas presented, but we'll focus on the structure. So the first section to look at is the discover and share. So if you haven't seen a Power Maths book or you have seen one, uh, when you pick one up, the first thing you will see on every single lesson, you will see something uh, like this. You will see a big visual image. That visual image is designed to be a stimulus to build that curiosity in children to help them get into the math. So, so there is something there straight away, a big image to help you as a teacher or your teachers give you an idea. It's something that White Rose doesn't necessarily provide. White Rose, I know, gives examples and some schemes, but it doesn't give you necessarily something like this, a, 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 a sequence for a lesson. And this is what uh, you will get with Power Math. So this could be used alongside White Rose very easily, and I'll talk about that later. But here, here, here's an image, and the idea is is that as 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 you the idea is that the teachers would tell the story. So what do they see? Oh, I see somebody uh, uh, somebody buying some chocolate. Or, oh, I see different size chocolate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, what does it make you think about? Uh, what could the questions be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Today, the focus on this. The idea is is that we get the children into the context we get the children thinking about really some mathematics or some problems that we might want them to answer so so that is that is what really discover is it's to generate curiosity in children to help them get into ideas because you, you if you look at the researcher like william and others like that they talk about how it's curiosity that encourages anybody to learn new ideas so that is the first section, discover. And what you'd see in classrooms that are using power message, you see children working together often to solve a problem. And so, so it might be which of these two bars of chocolate has got the most number of pieces? And that might be the question. And then children work together. They might use representations like counters or cubes to make the chocolate. And then they maybe count in pairs. Or, so depending on what they do, 
that is the approach that they will take. So, so it's giving you an idea or giving your teachers an idea of how maybe how to get into a lesson. OK, well, how do I start a lesson? So we set the children off with a bit of a task. So give you another example of a, 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 a share. I think this is from year four. And so this is about this is very much about uh, this is a classroom activity that you might want to do. So you look at this, you could put this on the board, but it also gives you an idea for an activity if you want to do this on. a. So you could maybe you could set this up as two hoops, two circles, and you could have some number cards on the desk and children have got multiples of three and multiples of six and, and start to think about what do they notice, et cetera. So this is, I think, uh, from a, a year three or a year four lesson, but it just gives you some idea of a, a, of a, so this is a classroom context. A lot of our contexts are not classroom based, but there are some classroom based. And that was, again, a bit of feedback that we had from Power Maths. But hopefully children can relate to the to, to the children and what they're doing, etc. So 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 the discover section is very, very, very much about about getting children into the learning today. So the children have a go. As a teacher, you'd, you'd be wandering around, looking at what they're doing. They'd be working in pairs, they'd be working in small groups, or occasionally even working individually, depending on the task. Uh, you will get two questions. So there's a couple of questions that will guide children over what you want them to do, et cetera, et cetera. So, so, so that's the first part, right? So they've got a question that they need to answer. So then we come on to what's called the share section. So the share section, is very much now about those ideas, right? We take the ideas from children and we build, and, and, and hopefully the children have come up with the ideas that you, uh, th that you will see on the share page. So this just brings those ideas that the children have probably most likely come up with and it brings them to life. So I think this was a year one example where children have to choose a small number of objects from a large group. So I think the first task was them to select 10 cubes and the second task was them to count four cubes. And you can see how what we've tried to do is we've tried to keep it clear, we've tried to keep it concise, and hopefully you can use that as a teacher, really as an image to be able to use that uh, uh, either in the on the board or in the book so that they can see, oh, this is what you, also oh, there are the four cubes, one, two, three, four, and then next to it is another example of a share about one more. And what the share will do Again, I go back to this idea of novice teachers or teachers who are looking to get to grips with mastery. What it will do is it will provide you with an idea of what representations and models to use in that lesson. So potentially to find one more and one less, you might want to use a 10 frame. Right now, it's not the only model and representation that you could use. You could use cubes, etc. But what we've tried to in a new edition of Power Maths is just give one consistent model throughout. We've also tried to make sure it matches up with what Ready to Progress does and, 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 a certain niche, and it will match the white row schemes as well. So, so it gives you that consistency. Uh, here's an example of a share from year four. So the year four share, again, this is about counting in multiples of 100. It's about, uh, and, and the second example is about rounding a number to the nearest thousand. Again, those models and images are ones that are, will be used through the maths program. And, and again, we've tried to simplify it. So as a teacher, you can use this 1,000, 2,000, let's count together, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see those models. So, so to see the share section as really the, 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 the result of what the children have probably just likely done in the discover section. And it guides the teacher over what actually what's 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 the words thinking what's it's almost like the worked example how do i solve this but it's full of those models images and representations which underpin power maths and and this model representation over here around the rounds near thousand that matches up completely to the to the to the method that say is used in the ready to progress criteria so hopefully you'll see a consistency uh, with all those things Right, so 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 discover is about setting children off with a short task. Okay, let's think about what to do. Share is about sharing that learning of the class. And then we move into the think together. So the think together section is very much then about examples that we can do together in a class. Now I mentioned earlier about I do, we do, you do approach. So you do the first one, then we do it in the next one as a class, and you do. That's that's not you don't have to do it like that. It's it's not necessarily something that you have to follow. These are just good examples for you to use. So, so you know what we've just we've just we've just rounded numbers. Okay, we've just done a task that talks about how to round numbers. Now let's check children if they can round numbers. So, how do we round 
the number 32 to the nearest 10. Well, we first need to think about the, uh, uh, the previous 10 and then the next 10 and then where's 32 on the line? And so what I'm trying to do is I'm tr I've got some good examples here to talk children through it so that they can start to round. And then gradually we strip away that uh, uh, the structure, leaving children, uh, leaving hope for the children with things like the challenge question, et cetera. Now, hopefully there's plenty of content here. Feedback, we got lots of feedback on this in the first edition and we've increased the amount of content in there just because teachers felt, or oh, actually they could do with a couple more examples. You don't have to use every single example. If you're looking at things, oh, I don't need to use them all, but there's plenty of examples in there to work through as a class. And we always then provide a challenge activity. What you tend to find if you're using Power Maths right at the very start of the year is that often uh, they're getting used to the structure. You might not be able to do every challenge activity or you do the challenge activity at a later time or you, your children are not ready for it. But again, I want to stress how Power Maths can be used flexibly. So you've got your, you've got your uh, initial question in the Discover, you've done all your classroom discussion. You're now working through some worked examples you know your class better than anybody else. And if your class are not ready for the challenge or they're not ready for question two and they just need to do more of example one, then so be it, really. That's what, that's what you, uh, uh, that, that's fine to do. So I want to really encourage you that you can use Power Maths like flexibly. So we've, we've introduced it, we've done some worked examples together, we've, we, we've looked at it, we've talked about the maths and you feel that the children in your group now are ready to do some independent work. And so, then we come into the practice book. So the practice book is what it says. It's, it, it's designed to be independent practice. We have had significant feedback about the practice books. Okay, some very positive, some really, really positive things and some things that people would like to see slightly improved. And so I think we've got a much more improved version, of, a, 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 a much improved version of this. And similar to the White Rose, we had similar feedback at White Rose from the point of view is that White Rose, they also wanted more fluency-based practice. So what we've done is the practice has become more fluency-based. It's not solely fluency-based, so you're not just gonna see lots of fluency-based questions. They're still encouraging reasoning, still encouraging problem solving, but particularly in key stage one and early key stage two, well, in fact, across key stage two, but particularly in key stage one, we have, we, we have, we have looked at a lot more fluency-based examples. So uh, on the left-hand side is an example from year one, an example from year four on the right, and you can see that you'll get these pages of questions like this. And again, these will match up very much with what we've been done in Think Together. So you will you will have seen something similar to question two in Think Together. So you'll know uh, exactly. So, so children will have been exposed to something like this before. So so this the, the independent practice has been uh, changed to, to be, make it a, a bit more fluency based and hopefully you can see that from here. Again, it's full of that variation. It's full of that constant uh, purposeful practice, I would say, where hopefully the teacher can use it uh, to, to try and demonstrate understanding. So you can see question 3A. That, so we've kept the five apples same, but we've varied the number of apples in total. How, and, and that might be a nice discussion point that you want to bring out with your classwork. What do you know is the same? What was different, et cetera. So there's plenty of practice. And then uh, at the end of a practice, I don't have an example here, at the end of the practice, there is a last couple of minutes is about reflection. It's about saying, right, what have I learned in this lesson? And there's, a, there's a short question at the end. Some people see it as an exit ticket. It's not necessarily an exit ticket as such, but it's just a, a moment of reflection that you want the children, can they answer this question? Can they answer the key learning that they want them to do in the lesson so that you as a teacher can just review that at the end of a lesson to say, yeah, I think my, I think my class have got, or I'm not sure my class have, maybe tomorrow we need to spend a bit more time. And there's no point in me pushing on because from that reflect, that they've been, uh, uh, that th they're not fully sure. So again, I want to stress that this is a, a scheme that can be very much a textbook that can be used and practice book that can be used flexibly. So, so, so that's the practice book. So hopefully, what you're seeing with that is very much a a, a structure that is that is is not untypical and, and it's in, in, in classrooms up and down the country and internationally as well. You'll see that it's a quite a, a common structure, but what you get with power mass is you get something that's well grounded in theory. You get all those underpinning mastery principles that White Rose and NCTM are very much talking about and it's consistent with, with their approach really. Uh, so uh, just so uh, there, there are some, so if I, 
if you want to order digital copies and digital samples, uh, the, the Pearson team, uh, Simon, I'm sure, will come on later on and talk to you about how you can get those. Uh, the print resources will all be updated. And again, we'll provide a timeline and, and it fits the updated progression. And uh, again, it provides that uh, choice for customers. So uh, in summary, right, uh, you, you, you'd be using the whole, uh, the only whole class mastery program fully aligned to the white rose maths progressions. Okay, so the only textbook scheme that's aligned to them, right? Uh, it follows all the mastery guidance that I've, I've, I've talked to you uh, throughout this presentation and it builds in that growth mindset, it encourages problem solving throughout, okay, right from the very start, right from that discover set, uh, uh, discover uh, task. What I would say is that it gives you a structure of a lesson that White Rose uh, doesn't give, and uh, it gives you that idea, that lesson design, that structure that you can follow and build a consistent teaching and maths across your school. Now, there might be some people in the call who've looked at Power Maths previously and thought, okay, it wasn't for them, say, to a couple of years ago, and for, for maybe a variety of reasons, it weren't right for your school, or there were a couple of things that you weren't sure on. So I just want to talk about, if you have seen it before, do take a look at the new additions. Have a very good look at the new additions, because what you'll notice is that we have made the pages much cleaner, right? So, so we've taken into account all the feedback, and you can see that we've made the... Uh, uh, the cleaner. So there's a new edition and there's the original. So you can see, I think this is from year one, parts and holes. So really we're just, this This is from the thing together. So this is what we work together in a classroom uh, uh, with, with the children on. So this idea of how do we get, what have we got here? What are the two parts, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what it was previously. So we've, we've reduced that cognitive uh, load. And we've also reduced the variation in mathematical models. I mentioned this earlier that Pro, uh, what we try to do, because NCTM said it, it, it would be really useful, this idea of different models and representations. And we still think it's really important that children have different models and representations and can see, think flexibly in terms of those. But what we felt better based on the feedback that we're receiving from teachers is let's just focus on a couple particular ones rather than trying to give too many. So, so that's what we've done in a new edition. And, and, and that's what you see. So if you think, so if you looked at the old edition, thought, oh, there's too many models and images from my class here, then maybe have a re-look at it and see what we've done uh, to, uh, to change that. Uh, changes to practice. So we've, uh, we've reduced the number of boxes at children to give them more flexibility with their learning. Okay, so absolutely. So rather than having a particular structure to an answer, sometimes we've reduced a lot of that. So, so instead of asking for fractions to be added in a particular way, we've just given more working out space rather than having children to work out which numbers go in boxes. So we've done that in a lot of places. Again, if you look at the sample material, and that was something that uh, uh, you felt your children wouldn't uh, be a fan of uh, previously, then have a good look now because I think you'll, you'll, you'll like what you see. And then we also uh, put square number background because again, it's a match similar to what they're doing in SATs so, so that children uh, uh, and also in, in, in journals and things, we're just providing you with uh, some squared paper on certain questions. And then another big one, but not to be underestimated, is really the accessibility improvement. So you can see a before, that, that top one should say old, apologies. Uh, and this, so you can see the original at the top there, and then this below is a new one way, so you can see the outline more, and also we've made images bigger. So, and again, that, that's all about accessibility for young children. Uh, yeah, so, so big improvements, big improvements there. And I mentioned that there is a, uh, a, a I mentioned that there is a starter activity which we'll call Power Up. So what we've done this time, what we've done this year, so for the new edition of Power Maths, and if you are using Power Maths, you get uh, already, and using the old edition, then you can you get these anyway. So it's something to bear in mind, is that we we've, we've created a quick recap. Okay, so we call it, instead of power instead of uh, power up you can use instead the quick recap now what we were finding with power up is that yeah they were very much fluency based games and activities that children could use okay and they were great and some teachers love them but what some teachers very much wanted is they wanted something that was very specific for the lesson right so in other words how I, I want to make sure that my children are ready to do this in the lesson so if i'm doing three digit plus three digit addition column addition can they first add two digits and two, do, they, do they understand the process of column addition? Because if they don't, I might need to just understand that first. So 
what we've given is these quick recaps, which are designed between two to five minutes, just little quick questions or activities you can ask your group to make a determination whether they're ready for this lesson. And if they're not, yeah, you do have to, it might just be you can remind them there and then, so given that pre-learning, et cetera, which is gonna be essential for the lesson, or you might need to say, you know what, I need to take a step back from today's learning and think about what I'm going to do, maybe focus on just, just solidifying this particular method before we move on to the new content. So. So those quick recaps there uh, are just to uh, check understanding. Now, I'll give an example of one, quite straightforward, but important, that just, just before you start, before in a compare numbers lesson, you're just checking that children know what the symbols less than and greater than mean, okay? And can, they can use them with smaller numbers. So just to give an example, because if they don't know that, then you're going to have an issue when you start comparing bigger numbers. So that's the purpose of the quick recap, to give your teachers just something that they can ask the class quickly before, uh, right at the start of the lesson, just to check that children can uh, know that uh, uh, content, really. So, white rose and power maths, I think this is my last slide. Okay, so they are designed to work together. Okay, follows the same scheme. You'll see the same steps. Uh, and, and there's even closer alignment in the new version, right? Uh, the power maths provides you with a lesson structure and example content, because sometimes we know that teaching from the white rose schemes uh, some schools want a, an absolute lesson structure. And what Power Maths provides you is with a definite lesson structure, a lesson by lesson approach, and it will and, and, and it's a consistent structure, as I said, starting with the discover, then the share, then the think together, and then some independent practice. Right. So so it gives you that, and there's plenty of worked examples, there's plenty of content that you can use, so you don't have to go and find stuff from lots of different places, really. And then there is a practice book to fit alongside. We know that White Rose uh, uh, know that White Rose does the worksheet content, which I'm, I'm, I'm sure lots of you will have a subscription for. But though that those two things are pretty much uh, consistent in terms of their approach, and what we find is schools who currently use Power Maths and White Rose, they see the White Rose as supplementing, so as extra practice. Okay, sometimes the sheets go home, or sometimes even Power Maths goes home. Really, so there's different ways that schools are using it flexibly. So you don't have to use one or the other. You can use one to supplement the other. Power Maths is very much there to give you a a, a lesson structure and a lesson approach. Okay, guided by those mastery principles. So I'm going to be quiet now, OK, because I think I've probably uh, spoken a bit too long. I'm going to hand over to Simon from Pearson, who will just talk you through uh, some of the things that the that previous Power Maths teachers uh, uh, had asked for. And, and, and hopefully, Simon, would, I think we've listened to. Thanks very much, Tony. That's brilliant. So my next thing, I think I'm going to share my screen now, which is going to put you off. Yes, I want to continue. Yeah. OK, hopefully you're looking at my screen now and I just need to let's launch these slides. By the way, um, there are a couple of questions to answer, which we'll come on to. Here we are then, okay, so I'm going to talk about a few things that um, um, yeah, on this uh, graphic is quite a good summary of some of the things that Tony's been talking about. Um, so I'm going to quickly um, run through some of those, but also tell you about a couple of new things that we've got for Power Maths as well, which is, which is exciting. Okay, so um, hopefully you've, you've got the message that, uh, that Power Maths is... Uh, fully aligned with uh, the white rose schemes of learning. The new edition of Power Maths is aligned really tightly with uh, the new edition of the white rose schemes of learning. Um, Tony's talked a bit, I think, about factoring in some of that NCTM guidance that's come out over the last few years into um, Power Maths, just sort of bringing that to bear on the new edition. Also updating the progression based on, on feedback that, that we've had from teachers using the materials, just how we could tweak it. Adding a bit more fluency practice into lessons, that's that's something that we've done based on, on feedback. And we've also used teacher feedback just to 
make the pupil materials that much, that little bit easier to use independently for children. Um, you've seen a few examples of the pages that hopefully uh, serve as examples of that. And, uh, and also Tony talks about the alignment for mixed age classes and how we've got that a little bit tighter for the most common adjacent year groups, but uh, we still very much have um, ways of working and um, best suggestions for, for any kind of combination of um, mixed age classes. I pointed out in the Q&A, we did do a webinar about mixed age um, teaching with Power Maths, which absolutely in terms of all the approaches and the principles that are explained there, that still does explain what your options are because there are lots of different options and it, it's not so much a case of just saying, you know, exactly, you know, this is how you have to do it. And we've made some improvements to accessibility in the children's materials as well, which uh, hopefully you've seen. Now, um, I'm going to talk then about the individual practice games because this is something new. And I think I might, um, I think I might just come out of that view for a moment because I might try and launch one. Maybe I'm trying to be too clever, but um, yeah, we've um, we've added some um, individual practice games for everybody who uses Power Maths as part of the digital content. There are 480 games, and is an example. Um, this is Marching Madness. This is a year two game. So we've got 480 of these games for number fluency practice and consolidation for year one to six. And pupils can log into the pupil world to access these games. You can, you can allocate them to children. They could be using them at home or at school. Um, they, they can do them on an iPad or a computer. And the teacher gets reporting on these games, um, which very useful, just tells you which children have done it, whether you know, what their scores are on the activities. And um, actually, then the next thing to say, I guess, is that there are three levels um, for these games, but um, there are also levels within levels. So maybe by, by showing you the bronze, silver, gold, I'm kind of getting ahead because if you look up the top here, this, this is uh, a year two game, 2.9B. And um, but for um, B is, a, is a, a core level game. The, and then the A one is a support level game. And the C one is a um, extension level game. So um, you've got three levels that you could be um, giving to the children. You could be deciding, of course, which children you're going to give which levels, or you could be letting them actually work through all of them throughout the year. And then even when you get into the game, you do have this bronze, silver, gold, which the children can select when they go in, so they can stretch themselves. These games are a kind of arcade style, as you can see from the picture. Um, purpose being that um, those are the, they're modelled on the sorts of games that children will be doing anyway in their own time. So just so that I wasn't talking to a slide for too long, I thought I might as well launch one and uh, hopefully I won't come across it too badly. But you can see there's a kind of arcade style here um, and it's practicing key number skills. It's it's something, um, this is already on active learn for every power user. So it's something you can do at trial, you'll be able to just try these out and have a look. Um, and um, oh, I can't bear to see them fall over the edge. So I think I'm going to get it right. Okay, so um, that's a very quick example. And hopefully that just like a time bit what I was talking about. And so this is. This is a free extra thing then for um, for everybody using Power Maths, um, and something else that we've added. Moving on is um, is um, to do with lesson videos because we have been asked a fair bit over time. People just wanting to see what does a Power Maths lesson look like? Can we get um, can we get some videos of classroom footage of a Power Maths lesson? So we have done something in that space as well, and I can probably show you that quickly as well. There's a sort of thumbnail image. So if I switch over the PowerPoints here. So, okay, so we've created for each part of the lesson, if you remember, Tony was talking about discover and share and think together. So for each part of the lesson, we're creating a PowerPoint, um, which has got um, lesson footage embedded. So the idea is that you, 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 can, you can play a video of that part of the lesson. Um, and the slides around the video Give you a quick reminder about the different parts of the lesson that you can work through with your teachers 
And also um, things to look out for and discuss in terms of what you see in the video and a bit of a kind of reflection activity for teachers, prompting them to um, reflect on, on their practice, think about what they might do differently in their next lesson. That's sort of the activity that, that you have um, in the slides. So this is something that you could use in a 10, 20 minute staff meeting. It's very much an idea for ongoing support for using Power Maths, because if you, if you start off with Power Maths, we'd recommend that you have the training and learn all about Power Maths, but this is something that you can use ongoingly with your staff, just um, a sort of top up. And actually on that point, um, there are some links here to blogs. And I think we might sort of come back to talking about blogs because blogs are another way that we offer ongoing support and advice, really, for just sort of key questions that we get asked, things that people want help with using Power Maths. So, um, yeah, so um, so these slides also that will link out to um, our support blogs. Um, what else to say? Just I think the fact that those those, again, will be part of um, Power Maths online, but um, these will be added in the summer. So they're, they're coming very soon. Okay, so perhaps I'll go back to my other slides. And I don't have I don't have very much more to go through with you really, but I'll just bring up this roadmap. Um, we do have our, our roadmap of the changes that we're making to Power Maths is on our website. Really, rather than talk through this in any detail, I think what I would just say is that the new edition, um, you can you can order all the new edition books now. Um, the new edition textbooks and practice books will be ready at the start of each term in the 2022 to 23 academic year. So they'll be ready for the start of September, the term A books and the, the term B books and C books will come slightly later when you need them. Um, and the digital content will be ready in advance of each term. So we will just update the Power Maths Online Toolkit with everything that you need to support your teaching uh, and that, that will be on Active Learn. You'll have access to that if you're a Power Maths user. So I think that that probably answers another question that we had earlier about the online content. So finally, I think um, there is a choice here for people using Power Maths. There's a choice of additions, but I think if um, this is more relevant to people who are using Power Maths already, I would say. So if you're a Power Maths user, you might want to find out more about the choice of, of whether you try to just switch quickly over to the new edition or keep using the current edition. But I think if you're new to Power Maths, the obvious thing would be to use the new editions. So that's what we'd what, what we'd recommend there. I think um, at that point, I might look back at the Q&A and see where we've got to. I know that there are a couple of questions that I thought we might come on to. Um, yeah, and maybe because I was talking about blogs, maybe I could kind of, um, yeah. Uh, okay, so so there was a question about how can you use Power Maths with children who are working below expectations? And um, yeah, let's think about that one first. So um, we do have a blog on that topic um, and I will drop a link to that into the chat. I think what I'll do first actually is um, I will, I'm just trying to remember, are you, I wonder, are you all able to see the Q&A? Um, are you able to see the questions that everybody asks? I might put these in the chat just to make double sure. Okay, well, I'll put some links in. Um, but yeah, um, Tony, let me give you a chance to talk about that. I was just gonna say that, that Power Maths clearly designed so that all children can succeed. Um, and the blogs are helping give you ideas and kind of empowering teachers to, to see that you can just tweak it the way that you need to, to make it work for your class and make sure that it, that it works for the children who are a bit behind and for the children who need extra stretching. So I'm just gonna dig out a couple of links and um, Tony, I don't know if you want to sort of say anything about that issue. Yeah, it's a great question, a question that comes up all the time. And I, I think not just with Power Maths, but I think any 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 situation where you've got children in your class who who uh, are not working in the year group and sometimes are work are, are, are not are working considerably considerably below that as well. So it's it's a question that I think uh, schools uh, and teachers face up and down the country. So a few a few thoughts on that. Firstly, sometimes schools decide to introduce Power Maths on a year or 
to, uh, year by year basis so they might just put it in key stage one first and then key, and so, so in other words it builds up so could, rather than going in uh, whole hog with all six year groups one of the things that you might want to do is consider doing it a phase approach so maybe a couple of year groups at a time allowing children to build the confidence we number it uh, so so that that that's something that's possible uh, we uh, we also uh, I mentioned earlier about this idea of same day intervention and, and within within the blogs and I think with and certainly within the teacher guide we recommend some same day intervention structures again that all depends on what you do in your school how your school works so this idea of, of, of using then uh, as a school you might want to consider using other support mechanisms like tutoring and other ways in which you can support those children who are a bit behind because sometimes that catching up needs to be done what we've tried to do in the new edition of power maths very much uh, has been to uh, really take that on board so that what you will see in the new practice and the textbook as well you will see where we've tried to build it up not assuming lots and lots of knowledge from previous year groups. So for example, just because in year six, we're talking about numbers to 10 million, it doesn't mean that every single number that we're going to meet includes numbers to 10 million. Uh, we do know that some schools are using power maths as a intervention scheme with other year groups and they're working with a, the training up a TA to work with, uh, to work and, and they just use the, the textbook and the, the cover the front cover uh, etc so there are different ways that schools are doing it but they are a lot of those methods are featured in the blog but it is a it is an it is an issue that schools up and down the country are facing regardless of what they're using and uh it, and but those are some ideas there thanks tony we did have a question about um differentiation i think it's in the kind of answers which is good um does Power maths provide a good level of uh, differentiation within within the, the planning um, and within the resources. So um, I guess you know quickly I can point out that you, you have your lesson that you can work through with children and um, with your class. You've got uh, you've got strengthen and, and deepen activities for each unit that you can use um, for children who need that extra support. Children who need the extra stretch. But the teacher guides are a big thing as well because. The teacher guides have suggestions for um, strengthen and deepen as you are working through the pages. So that's something that you and, uh, and teaching assistants can use as well to make sure that while your class are working on the same content and sometimes, you know, the same questions um, that you can offer that support and stretch even kind of, you know, just just within the regular class content. Um, do you feel you kind of what you would want to say about that topic, Tony, or do you want to add anything else? Uh, no, that's fine. So I don't think about it. But the, there was a question: Where do longer uh, where do longer maths investigations come into this? Investigations. What, anything to say about uh, that? Yeah, great, great question. And I think I think that uh, one of the things I said at the our com at White Rose conference early in the week is is around really. Uh, teachers taking some risks and 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 occasion occasionally taking some risks and 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 bringing the maths to life. And I think I, I'm pretty confident that if you if you if you take a look at some of the sample materials, take a look at the discovers, and I and and some of the challenge exercises that that I think you can turn those into much bigger thought provoking type investigations to help children generalize. So so I get, but I think that. There is a risk element to that in sometimes and a fear element for some teachers who are not used to that. So I, I definitely feel that there are some plenty, in fact, more than some plenty of activities in every single year group that you will see that allow children to take, uh, which allow children to spend a bit more extended time investigating a problem, investigating. Uh, so, for example, a, a good one I'm thinking about is, is, uh, is division with remainder. OK, and, and the children, we took this from a, we, we took the idea from a Chinese lesson. We saw uh, a Chinese lesson that we saw and the idea that children build squares for division by four and they could see. And then they could start investigating what happens when you divide by three by making uh, by taking lollipop sticks to make triangles and stuff like that. And that could be very much uh, something that's taken over the course of the lesson. And actually, the think together that so you could think of the whole lesson as being one big investigation piece that you work together as a class. But again, that that requires a teacher to look at it and, and to think oh that's what i'm going to do but hopefully 
we've tried to design power mass so to allow that flexibility really and the thing i would say that if you are using power you do end up using power mass please make sure you, you if if children are not ready to move on because they haven't grasped the topic on a particular lesson take a bit of, there is there is flexibility built in to make so it does look there's not 120 lessons and therefore 120 we provide 120 lessons we don't do that we we know that sometimes you need to spend a bit longer and that's where you might want to supplement it with some of the white row stuff uh worksheets etc because the white row sheets will absolutely match the same models and representations i think on investigations um just to say i i did put a link in the chat to a blog about um stretching and challenging children and um and there, there is a bit in there about how you can so sometimes tweak a question in various ways um, just for kind of what you need in the classroom. So, I mean, you don't have to do this, but sometimes, you know, the, the question as it's written, you might just see as a teacher that you you could turn it into a game that children can kind of keep playing while you're working with another group. Or, um, yeah, you, 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 so you sometimes might have a question that you can kind of turn into a game, but you might also have a question that you can turn into an investigation quite easily. Um, and um, you, you needn't feel that you, that you can't do that. You know, you as teachers will spot those opportunities some, um, sometimes. And um, hopefully the blogs kind of convey that, that you, um, that you can absolutely uh, be creative and just use the materials to teach a great lesson. Um, I think where we, where you were uh, where we were getting to there, it felt like a good lead in actually to this other question though. Um, how does Power Maths prepare children for SATs? Are you happy to do that one, Tony? Uh, yeah, great. Yeah, uh, uh, really good question. So, uh, I, so to put it simply, is is that. I feel that when you and you need to look at the sample materials, I feel that you will notice plenty of examples and uh, uh, and questions that very much looks like ones that you will typically get in SATS questions. I feel I feel pretty confident that not just in the assessment bits at the end, but very much throughout the whole practice and particularly as you get to year five and six. You, I, I don't want to call it a sat style, but I feel that those the, 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 those those lessons where you will see uh, problem solving type activities and, and questions that that tend to mirror what you would what you would okay what you would see in sats really. I think I think you will honestly see those as you uh, as you look at the sample materials and and also we build it up by giving children's method. We're giving children methods that. That will be useful, and we're trying to build that fluency with a number as well. So we're giving them efficient strategies. So trying to think of, say, if I was doing ten thousand minus two thousand one hundred and ninety-six, we've uh, which is a typical SATS question, and and I remember right from year four, five, and six. In every single year, we remind children that what they can do is change one number to nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, and I forgot what the other number was, but basically take one off that number, and that common difference will be the same. So those strategies, that efficiency, are, are very much, are very much come through all the books. And if you look at some example books and get the digital samples, you should see that. And then we also have the several units across the books where uh, what we call a more problem solving units, where they problem solving stroke reflection units, where they bring together content from other units and put them together and, and so children are reminded how to maybe work with fractions decimal percentages together but again if you see the if you see the structure you'll see where those are thanks tony i reckon we've worked through the questions really i'm just having a little look in the chat now um yeah thanks for thanks for all your questions by the way and apologies if my um if it wasn't very clear easy to see what i was sharing but um I think there shouldn't be a problem with sharing slides as well as sharing the video. So we could do that after do that. And that helps you zoom in on anything that you wanted to see. Simon, the other thing that I just want to say is that if if, if schools do start to use power, uh, start to use power mass from September, our hope is to run regular events with teachers and things that, as well as the blogs as well, like webinars, drop-ins and things that they can use to help them use the teachers. So that's something else to bear in mind. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Um, okay, anything else to answer, or should we? I think we've uh, we filled the time quite well with all the really good questions. 
Um, so, yeah, I, I, I can't see anything sort of flicking through. If we think there's anything that we pick up that we didn't answer, we can always kind of do that at the same time as sharing the recording. Okay, well, thanks very much, Tony. Really appreciate your time and um, uh, running through every, uh, all of that. And uh, thanks to you all for attending. Um, finish the session now. So uh, thank you very much. Have a, have a good evening.